Visual Diary, August 7th, 2021. It has been 365 days since the incident, but I am finally free. I have finally found a location without their influence. Oh no! Oh no, they found me! Ah! Ah! Jesus! Oh no! It really hurt! Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Rise of the Duelist contains a lot of tools for older decks aiming to frustrate an entirely new generation of players. Infer Noble Knight boosts Noble Knight, Revolution boosts Pendulum, and Dogmatica boosts, well, anything with an extra deck. But there remains one card, one stellar boost to an otherwise unplayable archetype that's received a strikingly low amount of time in the spotlight. Today we'll be looking at Edge Imp Scythe and the deck it enables, Fluffle. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll make sure the new tin promos are extremely playable. In Dark Magician. So here's the list, and before you start calling me racial slurs for my ratios, keep in mind one important detail. I'm not very good at deck building. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the deck breakdowns for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's fiddle with Fluffle. Fluffle is shorthand for the fusion summoning deck that marries the exceptionally cute stuffed animal archetype with which it shares its name with the horrifying and indescribably fearsome Edge Imp archetype. The Fluffles, by way of dog, bear, and wings, set up gotcha levels of resources in hand which can be used alongside the Edge Imps to summon powerful monsters that pop, send, and repeatedly run over the opponent's monsters. Unfortunately, this deck faces a single serious problem. It wants to blind second. Because we live in 2020, of course, you can finagle reasonable boards on the play by committing massive main deck resources to window setups, but no serious deck is losing to that these days. It's in Fluffle's nature to OTK, and without the tools to do so, it faded into almost complete obscurity. Until, like, a week ago. Fluffle Scythe is the most apologetic card that's ever been printed. Konami couldn't have telegraphed, we're sorry, anymore unless the card came pre-packaged with a teary YouTube cancel response. Oh, uh, speaking of... I am so sorry for calling DM players greedy babies during the tin reveals. I hope that you can all forgive me. Anyway, Scythe allows you to fusion summon on your opponent's turn, and the newest addition to the Fright for line of collectible plushies, Cruel Whale, pops a card on both players' fields when it's summoned. Scythe's utility doesn't end there, however, it can be banished from the graveyard to prevent a pop, meaning you're able to either keep the whale on field or send it to the graveyard to telegraph a lightning storm. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Fluffles. Three dog, three bear, two wings, a pangu, a dolphin, a new and absolutely insane toy vendor reset, sheep, cat, and owl. After that are the edge imps, one sabers, three chain, and three scythe. Finally, the spells, three storm, three droplets, three poly, three fright for patchwork, three toy vendor, two fright for fusion, one fright for repair, and two foolish burial goods. In the extra, we're on two whale, two saber tooth, two kraken, a wolf, and a sabers. That's followed by ding, abyss, access code, appaloosa, unicorn, cross sheep, and the best card in the deck, verte anaconda. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against altergeist. Man, imagine looking at the new, fun, interesting stuff you can do in Rise of the Duelist, and then voluntarily electing to play altergeist. No shade to my opponent though, they're going first and they seem to have opened two Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. They're going to lead with the copy of Melu Seek, linking it off for a Link Rebo to get a multi-faker to hand, setting one trap and passing. They will not be keeping that trap for long however because I'll activate Edge Imp Scythe and then the effect of Fright for Whale, chaining Fright for Whale again. They'll negate the effect to send from deck but we'll still get to pop that infip, leaving the multi-faker stranded in hand. In main phase one we're going to activate Patchwork, they'll Ash again, leaving us free to activate Whale to send a copy of Repair. From here we can start popping off. We'll lead with a copy of Foolish Burial Goods, sending a Toy Vendor using Toy Vendor's effect to get a copy of Dolphin a hand. Next, we'll activate Repair to special summon the Dolphin from the hand so we can reset this copy of Toy Vendor and send a Wings to Graveyard. Next, we'll activate the effect of Toy Vendor, discarding this copy of Droplet and unfortunately bricking, but that Wings should unbrick us. We'll activate the Graveyard effect of Toy Vendor, then normal summon a Fluffle Penguin, activating its effect to special summon a Fluffle Dog. We'll activate Dog's effect in order to get a Bear, and then Bear's effect for another Toy Vendor. OPT's what? We'll then go into a Fright for Fusion. This is a little crusty and not a particularly sexy line, but it will get the job done. We'll go into Unicorn off of the monster we reborned with Cross Sheep before making an access code talker. We get 5,300 and 2,800 in, which is lethal. 
So it's time for game two, and our opponent's playing Salaman Great. We play something new. They're going first, they're going to lead with a copy of Sign and Mining to add a gazelle from deck to hand. Next, they'll normal summon a copy of Foxy and find off the top. Nothing. Wow. They'll link summon a copy of Veilinx, activating both its effect and the effect of the Parallel Exceed in hand, getting from deck to hand a copy of Salaman Great Sanctuary, and from deck a copy of Parallel Exceed. Next, they'll activate Sanctuary and Reincarnation summon the Veilinx to get the Gazelle out of hand. They'll trigger the effect of the Gazelle to send a Roar to Graveyard before Link summoning a Sunlight Wolf and making that extremely pesky Xyz monster, Baguska. They'll pass back to us, but I think we can do this. We'll lead with a Lightning Storm to get the Veilinx out of the Graveyard, then we'll fire off a Forbidden Droplet so we can activate monster effects. A Patchwork is next, and thankfully it resolves. We'll go for a Toy Vendor, we have to get a little bit lucky, and we do! A Sheep is just what we need. We'll go for Chain's Effect here, getting a Fusion, then Normal Summon a Cat, use Sheep's Effect to put the Cat back in hand to Special Summon the Edge of Chain, and Polymerize into a copy of Whale. We'll activate the effect of Whale and the effect of Cat in order to get ourselves a copy of Polymerization from our Graveyard back to our hand, followed by Toy Vendor's Effect to get a Fluffle Dog to hand. We'll summon it out with Repair and trigger the effect of Dog to get a Sabres to hand, followed that up with polymerization for a tiger and tiger pop our opponent's remaining field. Now unfortunately this does trigger the hand effect of gazelle, they are able to special summon it, but we can get rid of that too. We'll make bear to anaconda and trigger the effect of whale, sending from extra deck to graveyard a copy of wolf so we can make a saber tooth with a fright for fusion and then bring back this copy of tiger. Finally we'll activate bear to anaconda, sending the last remaining fright for fusion to make a kraken and kraken's effect to get rid of that pesky gazelle. We'll proceed to battle phase and get in for well over lethal. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Dragon Link, and a build that will supremely test our ability to go second. They're going to lead with a copy of Dragon's Ravine, sending an Absurider Dragon to Graveyard and triggering its effect to add a Rocket Synchron to hand. Next, they'll pitch that Rocket Synchron with one for one, summoning a Black Metal Dragon from deck, and Link summoning a Striker Dragon right afterwards. They'll, unsurprisingly, search a copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal, bringing back this copy of Rocket Synchron, enabling a Link summon of Romulus. They're going to add a copy of Dragoonity Divine Lance to hand, which will equip from deck a copy of Dragoonity Phalanx. They'll summon the Phalanx, then afterwards Link summon a Linkross, so they not only have a tuner, but also tokens with which to Synchro summon. Are you sick of this yet? They're going to... Summon up Vylon Cube? What? Smoke Grenade of the Thief? Oh my god, we're completely dead. Okay, they'll Marshall Metal Marcher into a Halka Fibrax, getting a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. They'll activate Boot Sector Launch in order to summon the Tracer from hand before going into a Striker Dragon and an LP. They'll trigger the effect of Striker Dragon to get the Tracer back before activating the effect of LP to summon from deck a copy of Brotar. They'll activate Brotar's effect, pitching the Tracer once again to get a copy of Chaos Dragon and Levianir. They'll make Dillinger's and Appaloosa going into Pisty and activating Pisty's effect to bring back the Tracer, summoning the Dillinger's from Graveyard and summoning the Chaos Dragon Levianir. They're going to rip one card out of our hand followed by a Link Summon of Buster Whelp and Union Carrier, activating Smoke Grenade, popping the Smoke Grenade with Rocket Tracer for a Silver Rocket Dragon, ripping a second! Oh my god. We're getting Domain Locked, Double Omni Negated, and Two Monster Negated. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the game's over. We're going to attempt to attack the Arclight, trigger the effect of Chain, I guess it accomplishes what we wanted, and pass back to our opponent. They've only got one card in the extra. What are the chances they can kill us? First, they'll activate Union Carrier to get a safer. then they'll special summon a copy of Drag and Buster the Destruction Swordsman, and... Ah, yes, okay, well, we are dead. Chaos Dragon Levineer will add insult to injury, ripping an additional card out of our hand before they get in for 3,000, 3,750, and, well, well over lethal. So, it's time for game two, and I refuse to give up my blind second ways. What am I supposed to make going first? Abyss Dweller? This hand is... okay. Unfortunately, it lacks any interaction on our opponent's turn, but it has some fantastic sweepers and things like Toy Vendor that go under Monster Negates. They're going to lead with a Black Metal Dragon for a Striker, getting a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon a hand, and then Special Summoning it afterwards. They'll activate Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon to bring back the Black to go into Romulus. They're going to get a Dragon Ravine to hand, telegraphing they already have the Lance. They'll activate Lance's effect to equip it with a copy of Phalanx from deck before Special Summoning the Phalanx and making Linkross. I am... so sick of this card. Afterwards, they'll synchro summon a copy of Martial Metal Marcher, bringing back this copy of Phalanx and going into Halka Fibrax. This is ideally what they meant to do the first time, getting a Vylon Cube from deck, going into a copy of Herald of the Arclight, and adding a Smoke Grenade of the Thief to the hand. They'll quick launch for the Tracer they are still missing, before going into an LP and triggering LP's effect to summon a copy of Brotar from deck. They'll activate Brotar, pitching the Ravine. Wow. For a copy of Absurator. They're going to go into Dillingerous, then bring back this Tracer, especially Absurator, and make an Appaloosa for four. My god. Next up is the Pisty. The Pisty effect will activate bringing back the Tracer. After that, they're going to activate the Dillingerous in Graveyard, and go into a Buster Whelp, special summoning a Chaos Dragon to tuck a card from my hand back into the deck. Finally, they're going to go into Union Carrier, equip their Tracer with a copy of Smoke Grenade, activate the effect of Tracer, popping the Smoke Grenade to get a copy of Silver Rocket, triggering the effect of Smoke Grenade, taking my Lightning Storm, going into Savage, equipping it doubly with very powerful cards. Alright, well, we might be able to do this. 
Whoa, three of a kind actually makes it better. We'll lead with a copy of Toy Vendor, and that eats a Bora load. Great news. We'll activate its effect in Graveyard for a Dolphin. We'll activate the Dolphin effect in Main Phase 2 after walking over this Herald. They get to Brotar in the Battle Phase, but it's no big deal. I know I'm dead if I allow them to untap anyway. We'll activate Dolphin. It'll be negated by Appaloosa. We'll activate Toy Vendor, and we have to get supremely lucky... We do with a wings, but with no way to access the extra deck, we can't even go into something like a Verte Anaconda that might win us the game. Unfortunately, it looks like our opponent has got this. They're going to go from Union Carrier into a copy of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent and a Noctovision, making Boral Sword and triggering the effect of Black Dragon and Noctovision, unfortunately, in order to activate Seyfert's effect afterward and get a copy of Chaos Dragon. Finally, they will pop our cards and proceed to battle phase, getting in for way, 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 way over lethal. So we're back with the deck and... Eh, we've been winning too often lately. Good to be reminded just how easy it is to lose. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's forgiving. As always, I'm sure I played this list like hot, wet, stinking garbage, like the tin promos, if you will, but it was still enough to scoop up a majority of our matches. Two, Forbidden Droplet is insane for the deck. I can't tell you how many times I pogged out of my mind discarding a toy vendor to hit a must negate. And three, Verte Anaconda is arguably a bigger buff for the deck than the new support. The ability to end your combos with Sheep and a Pal into a 12 attack wolf is about as humiliating for your opponent as possible. And the cons. One, while the tools for going second are better than they've ever been before, the boards decks make going first are similarly stronger. While we can beat almost any setup from a year ago, Buster Lock and Smoke Grenade really ruins our day. Two, we're locked from a good third of the powerful going second options. The deck doesn't make monsters that are sticky, meaning you've got to win the game on your second turn or not at all. Dark Ruler and Evenly Matched are unfortunately out of our grasp. And three, it's hard to play optimally. You're navigating non-linear combos, often through interaction, and it's easy to make a misstep. All in all, Fluffle's an old classic, but it isn't nearly good enough to make it back into the metagame. That said, the new support likely cements its status as a rogue option, at least until people start boarding Dimensional Barrier for Dogmatica. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Blue Boy, Candyman, Crispy, Dim Sum 05, Innercrest, King Magic Ruler, Meteor Mirage, Mike Carlotti, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amid Elefondi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Candid, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Dylan Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Don Coro, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gamer Games, Gavin Charlie Kowski, Gustavo Secon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Gel Du Radeau, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Guru Kaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number no. 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meadow Edits, Meds for Feds, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskovarik, Miyuna Arash, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Second, Sophie Forster, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Chinchuski, Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yuki A. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.